Hello, welcome to the MyPath Drive Policy Training. Today's training addresses the new MyPath Drive Policy that is in effect beginning in December 2020. If you are an improved driver for the company, then this policy applies to you. Today we are going to talk about the expectations of you as an approved driver, your role and responsibility behind the wheel, and what you can expect from us as an organization in the event of an accident or violations of the drive policy. Please pay close attention and feel free to ask questions of your human resource department at the conclusion of the training. Thank you. In your role as a driver for the organization, you are responsible for providing safe, reliable transportation for the clients or students in your care. This is a critical and essential function of your job. It is not a responsibility that you should take lightly. It is not a responsibility that we at MyPath took lightly when assigning and determining that you were eligible to be a driver for us. This policy addresses all areas of the employee's life cycle as a driver, including the pre-employment verification of driving records, an annual driving record check, the expectation of all company drivers, the training that is required of you as a driver before getting behind the wheel of the van, the ongoing training that may be required of you, and the corrective action process in the event that you are not a perfect driver like most of us. All corrective action on that note will be recorded and kept in the employee personnel file for one year. The drive policy is designed and written that it treats all employees equally and it promotes employee awareness at each step of the corrective action process if that process is implemented. The policy also holds all employees to the same standard expectation. In 2020, MyPath implemented the use of telematics GPS tracking, also known as Azuga. The GPS unit is plugged into each and every company vehicle. It is designed to help us know where you are in the event of an emergency, as well as track and record driving behaviors and habits of our staff. The habits and tracking that we are most concerned with at this time include sudden acceleration, sudden or hard braking, removal of the telematics unit from the vehicle, and of course, speeding. Hard braking is designed as decelerating at a fast rate of speed in one second or less. Likewise, sudden acceleration is accelerating at a fast rate of speed in one second or less. And speeding, we're looking at speeds greater than the posted speed limit. If you are tagged as having a, an alert under the telematic system, your supervisor will be notified and they will address you and make you aware of the alert. You may be subject to corrective action for telematics alerts. If you do not agree with the alert, for example, the area in which you were said to be speeding has a different posted speed limit than the alert recognizes, please be sure to point that out to your supervisor who will notify the MyPath Support Services team handling the Telematics Azuga account, and we will look into that for you. Accidents, they happen, they happen to all of us. If you are involved in a vehicle accident while at work, regardless of who is at fault, or if you are transporting clients or traveling alone, you are to notify your supervisor immediately, but not before you secure the safety and well being of the passengers in your care, especially our clients. Once you've notified your supervisor, please notify Susan Spry, the MyPath Support Services Workers' Compensation and Auto Accident Claims Manager. Assuming the police have been called, you're going to want to be sure to document and get a copy of any police report information that is filed, such as the police report number at the time of the accident. Be sure to document and note what police jurisdiction was called to the scene. 
take pictures of the accident, the damage to your vehicle, the other vehicles involved, the conditions in the area of the accident, and the accident scene itself. Submit the police report information and the photos along with a completed vehicle incident reporting form to Susan Spry. You can submit that form via email, fax, or most conveniently, use the Ready app. If you are involved in an accident, you may be subject to post-accident drug and alcohol testing. Testing will be determined by Human Resources and the management team based on the circumstances, severity, road conditions, and cause of the accident. Refusal to test at the time you are asked is considered a voluntary resignation. All testing is at the expense of the company. Let's take a look at who's eligible to drive for MyPath. The MyPath standards for who is eligible to drive are created and honored in conjunction with our insurance provider. Together, we have determined the criteria and considerations for who is eligible are include, but are not limited to, the employee's age, the length that the employee has possessed a state of residence driver's license, the driver record for the past three years, the frequency and severity of any driving citations and violations. This includes parking tickets, moving violations, and accidents. Motor vehicle record checks are run both at the time you are hired or transferred into a drive position and on an annual basis based on the month in which you were hired. Again, on an annual basis, the severity and frequency of the employee's driving record, citations, tickets, and offenses will be considered. You may be subject to a temporary or permanent loss of drive privileges if your eligibility changes. In Indiana, our operations and staff that are drivers are required to provide proof of insurance and registration at the time that they are hired into a drive status position. This is per the Indiana Administrative Code. On an annual basis, you will be asked again to provide proof of registration and insurance. If your insurance renews in Indiana more frequently than once a year, you will be required to provide proof of insurance upon each renewal in the year. For those of you in Indiana, you must also include, at least on an annual basis, the declaration page providing the coverage levels that you carry for your vehicle. In the state of Wisconsin, at the time of hire and or transfer into a position that is a drive status, you are required to provide proof of insurance. You may also be requested to provide that information on an annual basis or in the event of an audit. MyPath drivers will receive training. The training is in three parts. The first will occur during your new hire orientation period. During that time, you will be presented a copy of the MyPath Vehicle and Passenger Safety Manual which will include a full copy of the drive policy. You are expected to read and sign off that you have received, read, and understand the expectations outlined in the safety manual and policy before proceeding to the next step. The second leg of the training that you will receive is a classroom training. That training can be taught live or virtually. It is designed and delivered by the company for which you work and is specific to the company needs, expectations, and requirements of you as a driver for them. It will also address vehicle-specific activities such as operation of a wheelchair lift. The third and final leg of the training that you will receive before getting behind the wheel of a vehicle is an in-program training. This includes a behind-the-wheel driver's observation. Think of it 
as a road test like when you first got your driver's license. You'll have a chance to get behind the wheel of the car and go for a drive with your supervisor or designee. It also presents an opportunity for the supervisor or designee to give you hands-on training on how to operate different components of the vehicle, such as the lift, handicap accessible doors, securements, and other unique functions of some of our vehicles. Please be sure to take full advantage of these three opportunities and ask questions that you may have as you go along. Inspect before you go. You are responsible for the vehicle once you take possession of the keys. That includes the physical condition of the vehicle when you are behind the wheel. So before you get on the road, be sure to take a walk around the car. Double check, are the headlights, blinkers, and taillights in working order? Are they, along with the windshield and side windows, clear of all debris, snow, and ice, allowing for a clean line of vision? Are the hood, the trunk, and the license plate cleared of snow and other debris so they are visible? Are the tires properly inflated? And did you notice any physical damage to the vehicle that wasn't noted previously? If the vehicle is damaged and it's new to you, please be sure to report that damage to your supervisor immediately. You may be asked to fill out a report of that vehicle damage. Some basic behind the wheel reminders. Do not get behind the wheel of the car if you are not sober, if you are not alert, or in a safe state of mind, if you are under the influence of any legal or illegal drug or substance. Know where you're going before you go. The use of paper maps and directions is not permitted for safety reasons. Be sure to always obey the traffic laws. This includes but is not limited to speeding. Do not speed. Leave early enough to allow extra time. It's best to arrive early. Be cautious and aware of your surroundings, especially pedestrians. They pop out from in between cars without warning. Use your blinkers when changing lanes, making turns, or exiting the freeways. Be sure to practice courteous, safe driving at all times. Filling the tank. At my path, we have WEX fleet gas cards for each of our company vehicles. These gas cards are assigned to a specific vehicle and are to be used to fill the tanks of company vehicles only. For information on how to utilize the WEX fleet gas card, please speak to your supervisor. There are steps that are involved that are unique and specific to you as a company driver. As a safety precaution, all company vehicles should have a gas level of one half or more at all times of the year. Seat belts are required at all times when driving the vehicle. You are not only responsible for wearing your own seat belt, but you are responsible for securing all of the passengers in your care in that vehicle at the time. Please be sure that you have properly seated and secured the passengers, whether in booster or child seats, wheelchairs, or simply seated in a van or car seat beside you. Once in motion, the driver and all passengers in the vehicle must remain buckled. If at any time a passenger unbuckles themselves, please pull off the road when you can safely do so Resecure the passenger and resume driving. The seating arrangement of clients in our vehicles can be critically important, especially when transporting multiple clients. In general, for safety reasons, it is recommended that when transporting a single client, that individual is seated in the second row immediately behind the passenger seat. 
This provides you as the driver an enhanced and clear line of vision on the client. However, it is known that we can't always transport one person at a time. When transporting multiple individuals, please do your best to ensure that you are seating clients with an empty seat or space between each one, when at all possible. When it is not possible, please be selective and careful about how you seat your clients. If a second staff is traveling with you, it's recommended that the second staff be seated between two of the clients. In the event that it is necessary to seat a client in the front seat, please be selective about which client you allow to ride in the front. If it is necessary and you do have to seat a client in the front, it should be the least behavioral and most secure client that you are transporting at the time. Drivers are expected to be paying attention to the road, not their cell phones, not maps, and ideally, not the radio. The attention should be solely on the road or the client in the vehicle. Distractions that are not tolerated when driving a company vehicle or transporting clients include eating, using your cell phone except as a GPS, wearing earbuds or earphones, loudly playing the radio or music from your cell phone, running personal errands, or transporting people, equipment, or other goods that are not directly related to your work. Your attention should, again, be on the road and the client. It's critical that we arrive safely and without distraction and disruption. Smoking is not permitted in or around any MyPath Company fleet vehicle. The fleet in this case also implies that smoking is not permitted in a personal vehicle when you are actively transporting a client. drive throughs Please be sure before you enter a drive through of any type, whether a restaurant or a car wash, for example, you know the clearance that that drive through offers, both height and width. Many of our company vehicles are too wide or too high to maneuver safely without damaging the vehicles through a drive through Save yourself some paperwork, avoid the drive throughs or ensure that you have proper clearance before entering. Employees who violate the MyPath Drive policy or are the recipient of a Telematica Zuga alert will be subject to the Corrective Action Program. The drive violations and Telematic alerts are considered to be performance issues or performance matters. Therefore, they will add and build on to any existing corrective action that you as the driver have already in your personnel file. Employees who have repeat violations will be subject to retraining, that retraining may include attending an internal classroom training again, taking an online driver's course, or attending and participating and passing a state approved drive program. As a last resort, repeat offenders may also lose their drive privileges for up to one year. Those who lose their drive privilege are also at risk of losing their specific shift and schedule and position. Violations of the drive policy will fall off after one year. That means a drive policy violation incurred in December of 2020 will fall off in 2021 December. Your supervisor or human resources will make you aware of any drive policy and violations on a weekly basis, you will be notified of any Telematic Azuga alerts that you are the recipient of. You should have received a copy of the MyPath Drive policy. At this time, please read the policy in its entirety. And on the final page of the policy, please sign and date it, acknowledging that you have received, read, 
understand and have been trained on the new policy. Once you have done so, please turn the signed acknowledgement form into your training host, human resources, or your supervisor following the directions given by that team. That concludes our training today. Thank you for your time and attention on this policy. I wish you all a great day. Thank you.